You know, it's all about perspective. But, but what is important for me is um, if you set up an ambition, yeah, I set an ambition that kind of keeps you worried, keeps you scared, keeps you excited, keeps you awake. You know, I, I always say that initially, the reason why I really wanted, I didn't know why I wanted to become a CEO. I cannot tell you the reason. Correct? It's, it's the same thing you say, you get in a young person saying, I want to be a neuroscientist. Correct? But some, if you ask them what really you want to do. But, but as I grew into the job, and so I remained much more focused, ruthlessly focused. I remained much more consistent. Correct? And I said a lot of no to many things. Because there's a lot of noise. And you also have to distinguish between noise. You have to distinguish the signal from the noise that people actually find. Every, especially now with a lot of social media and the, the digitization of our, of, our, of our technology. Especially mobile technology. So that, that's it. And then I said, can I look at people who have done well? Can I look at global giants? Because, you know, we say we are different, right? There's always this view. But I was surprised to you, you know, Patrick, that if you think about medical science and you can look at Harvard Medical School, you know, literature, the human brain hasn't changed in a century. Not a century. They believe just because we are more enabled, we are more interconnected, we are more available. The internet is up here. You can do anything else you need. The world is your kind of, kind of market space for you. It doesn't mean that we've changed from an intellectual perspective. So the issue is that we should be able to catalyze that ambition and go ahead. So now I see why that ambition was. It's to enable, it's to enable progress. It's to create an impact for some lives. And that's what I'm doing. How do we build Stanbic to become... I am very confident this decade will become a more significant bank. Our ambition is to say, how do we grow? Today we are a top six bank, a top seven bank. How do you break into top five? How do you become a top three bank? In this decade, and I'm convicted with that journey, we will be, with our global connections, with our very strong parent standard bank, we have no doubt. We, today in 20 countries, definitely in Kenya, we'll become a much stronger player. We are a top three bank today in the region. So there's no doubt to become a top three bank in Kenya. So my leadership journey has been about continuing to push, you know, and people don't like <laughs> when you're being pushed. But let me assure you that pushing is the only thing that got breakthrough. So the kind of laziness or, you know, just staying around, trading the waters, as I call it, this is a recipe for disaster, for sure. And, and also, there isn't a shortcut, because in my view, you must remain, stay the course. That's what I have been able to do. So I was privileged to meet people that have... I've done this before, both in Kenya. You know, I had a lot of relationship with my, the late Bob Collymore that really inspired me. Most of you remember him, you know. I have a lot of challenges to be able to work with people globally as well, which I think is valuable. So that for me is exciting. And then the more I see, the vision was become a CEO. I didn't even know a CEO of what. So you can imagine, in particular, if I wanted to become a CEO today of a person like General Electric, those days they were a large giant, or even Microsoft. You see the differences that you really have. And I don't think being a CEO is, in some ways, at the end of it. It's perhaps the beginning. How do you strengthen our businesses? How do you grow possibility for our staff? How do we get our customers to progress? How do we build a nation through activities for the economy to grow? That's really what roles do. It's not about the job. You know. <laughs> You know, people still say that I was the youngest CEO for a listed bank. But, you know, when you pursue excellence, there is no end to it. It's a journey. So, Patrick, I wouldn't sit here and tell you what our strategy is. That I would not do. What I would tell you is tell you what our ambition is. You leave for us to drive it and you can measure us by 2027, by 2028. It's a three to five year journey. And I can assure you, I'll still be here in, in the bank. And, and my, you talk about when you, you become a CEO and managing the success. Have I been successful? I would say I've been relatively been successful. Because at the end of the day, we want to be the bank that delivers the best services, solutions for our clients, enabling our staff to have the best bank to work for, and to be the brand powerhouse yeah, that quintessentially can own the space as the best bank. The chief executive role is not an end by itself. And if there's something I can speak to young people, 
if you have not impacted another person, if you have not added an extra mile to an additional person, you haven't led. If leadership is about self, about acquiring things, <laughs> about, about having you know, the best car in town, th then I think that's not leadership in my view. And you can see that. And you can look at global leaders. Nobody knows what Bill Gates drives. Does anyone know? Does it matter at the end of the day? But they know that Microsoft and the team and the philanthropy through Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation they are doing, the malaria innovations, what they are doing, that's really the impact. That's true leadership. And, and that's what I will aspire for. If you, if you, if you actually, if that is the ambition and the dream, then it's quite easy to become a chief executive. You get me? But if the role is just become a CEO for the sake of it, then at the end of the day it will happen and there's no impact. And those kind of CEOs never leave a trail, never leave a mark. And that's why we all remember Bob Collimo, for instance, for many years. And you know, I also say something, Patrick, that in this generation, you must build your craft as you fly it. If you are waiting for the craft to be delivered to you ready, like a gift, nicely packaged, I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe it's high time to start packaging your gift. <laughs>
leadership can be transferred between different sectors. The banking sector has been the most exciting for two reasons, correct? Which is what I like about the financial sector. And I think it's better to speak about the financial sector more than even the banking sector. In our markets, the first level of capital for a small business, for a family to set up a school or a dispensary or a clinic, comes from banks. We mobilize savings, correct? And through risk management and capital allocations, we are able to provide capital for enterprise, for individuals, for companies, to create jobs, to create growth, to invest. And that's something people don't appreciate. And we still have to manage the capital we deploy to return it back to the savers. I don't know any other sector in the continent that is as influential and catalytic like the financial sector. Now, we may not always be appreciated. This is not about appreciation. It's about fact. Yeah? The reason why you set up a smaller business, like large industrial groups, manufacturing, steel, cement, packaging, you know, oil tanks for water holding, correct? Those enterprises were zero 20 years ago. So my kids today, in the next 10, 20 years, when they come to employment, we have created more jobs, more businesses, more opportunities, more growth, correct? And I think private sector has a role to play to create more jobs and businesses, even than governments. Well, people say a lot that I spend so much time working so much. I mean, I get accused about, about that a lot. I mean, and it's okay to be accused. I think in life, I am always a contrarian that if people don't call you names, I'm not sure you're making progress. Yeah? Because the journey is not just about work and family. The agenda is about nation building. Even a good pecker that continues hitting on the solid rock or finally gets a breakthrough moment. So the question is, and, and this is a philosophical question, Patrick, so if, if I look at a farmer or someone, you know, when you, across Kenya where our customers are, I always laugh when I go to either in Kilifi or I go to, it's a true story, or you go into Machakos area or Kambani, and there are always these people that are hitting a big rock to make ballast. You know, they're always hitting with a small hammer. It looks very rudimentary, actually Stone Age, but they're hitting. Now the question you always have, what, what hit on the rock finally breaks the rock? Is it the last hit? Or is it the hundred hits that missed to create the rock? And there's a lot of debate globally about what it is. My always belief is that consistently hitting pressure on the rock gets enough momentum and lift, and the, broke, the, the rock gives way, and you get ballast. And that is the journey for life. It's not an end, it's the process. Yeah? But what is the agenda to break the rock? To get ballast, to sell it. But you must be hitting, and you may, you may spend days. Some of those people come for days. You get me? So that's my answer to you about what I see. What trait, you want to ask me? I mean, I think consistency. Yeah? I mean, I, I'm generally very numb to a lot of the attacks that I... I mean, I've been attacked a lot, you know, by media. But, you know, thank God, you know, Patrick, you, you, never, you never attacked me at all. And you're, you're <laughs> at all. I've been attacked with... You know, we live in an environment of falsehoods, fake media, you know, that sells a lot. Yeah? And I say you must distinguish signal from noise. So I don't mind being attacked as long as it's fact-based. Correct? And, and I've made mistakes in my career. There's no life without mistakes. In fact, that's the only way you learn. Okay? You showed me one leader globally who never made a mistake. And I'll show you a guy who is lying. To, and that person has never led. Correct? Even, even the most successful people, even the guys who want to do what the Galacticus, the guys who want to take things to, to the sky. Right? To, to basically outside the orbit. <laughs> they are failures, right? The launches sometimes don't take off. Do they stop? I mean, should you just stop? I and mean, who expects to succeed in the first moment? We work at it. It's a building in progress, right? Even just trying, I'm trying to run one of the things I do when I am, so one is consistency. And the other thing is, you know, I say create your luck. You create your luck in the words of Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Create your luck by being super practice. Be ready. So practice to become, be ahead of yourself. That's what I want today. Practice yourself. Make sure you can practice. So if I want to run half a marathon, I can't just wake up today and say, Patrick, I want to run a marathon. I can, but I'll be the last guy. You want to build progress through osmosis. We close your eye and suddenly you become a CEO of a large bank. This philosophy in the last two decades, 
it wasn't there when I, started, I finished my university education. It wasn't there. Correct? When I was doing the PwC thing, we spent days and nights. We spent long hours understanding the craft. We wanted to benchmark global auditors in London and New York and Tokyo. Correct? But today, I think the philosophy, and I, and I think this is a passing, I don't see it when you go to China or in Seoul in Korea. I don't see it. Or even the kibbutz in Tel Aviv. You don't see that problem. Young people are going to learn how to become best scientists in irrigating, drop irrigation for crops in the desert. And they spend 10 years. Now, if my farmer here wants to be a farmer by mobile phone from Nairobi, correct? Has never seen the soil, has no soil sampling, has no chemistry, doesn't know what fertilizer is putting in. How are you going to compete with crop science with a guy who is the same age based in Tel Aviv? I mean, I think we must sharpen our craft. We must aim, to, and also we have to bring in science, in, especially for agriculture. We have to bring in science. And I like the initiative, for instance, for government to bring in fertilizer to help farmers to be able to improve productivity. Three things that I think as a leader I have learned over the last, over the last 20 years. And I would say, first I think it's good for them to know who they are. They need to define for themselves. Not, you can't be defined by another person who you are. You need to be defined who you are. Whether, whether you want to progressively run a business, start an enterprise, do a job, be a mechanic, those are who you are. Correct? That's important for you. The second item is to understand why you are here. I, I think we, there's a, a, a God-given moment to do more, to impact the next generation. That's important for us. And thirdly, to do it well. Do the right thing. This thing about short-term race. Correct? I didn't see it in the last decade. I don't think I'll see it in this century. Uh, life is a dash. I kind of think that life is much more like what Eliud Kipchoge runs. Life tends to be a marathon. There are seasons. For me, the season now I have is to give back, to build a stronger institutions, mentor my young leaders to become the next champions for Stanbic and be able to run a stronger business in the region. That's the point I am in today. Uh, at a young age, I was not very clear. Why did I choose PwC? Uh, you know, I think it's about the brand proposition for PwC. And there are many people I was very much excited about. Charles Mushene, for instance, who was a senior partner and managing partner of PwC, was a, a, a very eclectic contrarian, I can remember. I think, and you know Charles Mushene here, yeah, in there. There are many people I looked up to. Our chairman today of the board, Kitil Mbate. He was one of the most virulent financial secretaries that we had in Kenya. People still remember him in the Dream Team. If you remember him in there. So we've been privileged. And I spoke about Martin Oduaro Tiano. So I chose because of the people I believe. And those people are similar. I think leadership, we must appreciate that different perspectives, correct? Different views should perhaps be our greatest strengths. People don't have to agree with you, correct? But I think you need to sell, they need to give you a chance to sell your idea. And if you are convicted about that journey, support you to achieve it. Correct? So, so the duality of ideas is something we need to believe and support. So the view that people must always see what you see, work for what you see, th that I think nobody is an enclave or ultimately owns all the knowledge in the world, not one person. So I like working with people that challenge me. Yeah? I, I, work, I do work with contrarians. I mean, it doesn't matter to me, actually. As long as the journey for us is to become a stronger institution. So if you look at my leadership team, that's why I give them a chance. We must be willing to learn from our mistakes. Yeah? So, for instance, you know, when I left uh, PwC in my career, and I went to work with the Vimalan team, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, George, this is one of the greatest mistakes you made. But you need courage. So I left, you know, the professional service, I went into industry. I didn't spend a long time. Then moving goes, I came and said, by the way, I think you can come and join the industry for cement. So, so although it was seen as a mistake, but I think it was an opportunity to catalyze the ambition of becoming a leader in the future. So he picked me. Remember when I said, if you are consistent, you do the right thing, people will come for you. You're right? So, so and, and, and people see mistakes as a bad thing. I think if we don't give ourselves the courage to try a new possibility, correct? A new possibility. So sometimes you have to be fearless. 
Because you know, fear is what stops us from trying things. Correct? You have to stop. Have, so I think that, that possibility is what gives you greatness, gives you new moments. I mean, I wanted to be able to work, work in a large global organization. I really wanted to do some work with General Electric when I was growing up, working in New York and everything else. You know, that's an aspiration. I never achieved it. But I think I, I finally got to my place in the banking sector and running Stand Big today. So I don't see those as, as failures. And, and, I've, and I try to see even some of the greatest people in sport. You know, Serena Williams is one person I pick up. Many start stops, start stops, but one of the world's greatest champions in tennis. Now, we only see the outcome. <laughs> yeah? Isn't it? But we don't see the effort. Even Michael Jordan, same effort. People see. Yeah? So I think that for me is what I would say is important. The mistakes and pattern of pattern. That's how we grow as human beings. In fact, if you don't make mistakes, naturally you don't grow. The culture about failing fast forward. That's a culture that we are always very much pushing. Today I say fail fast, but fail cheap. <laughs> you know? Because then there's no point of failing, and it's too costly. So it's, it's quite ambitious. So, uh, and obviously, like, initially I, was, I wanted to run a 42-kilometer race. <laughs> you know, initially. Yeah. And you know why? Because I really wanted to run the Boston Marathon. And we have a lot of people who, there are bankers in Kenya who have run the Boston Marathon. Correct? There are bankers. One that used to challenge me a lot, I think she's now left, was Rebecca uh, for Family Bank. Rebecca has run the Boston and New York Marathon. She's now, I think, left the Family Bank. Yeah? Rebecca Mbithi. Correct? But I said, uh, look, it, and it's because my elder brother runs the marathon. Correct? So my brother is a professor, he runs a marathon, and he, and he finishes top 1,000. <laughs> you, you know, Patrick, that race has got close to 50,000, 60,000 people running. So me from Nairobi, trying to be top 1,000, <laughs> I don't even see how it's going to work. <laughs> so I adjusted my ambition to 21. What is my real comparison? How I am running compared to Eliud Kipchoge? I use him a lot. Because Eliud is running two minutes, two and a half minutes per kilometer consistently for 42K. To me, I'm running six. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get to five. So if I am twice Eliud, that is, I, am, I, I, my med, I can hang my med on the neck. Twice as Eliud. I think he did two hours and some few seconds. Right? That is 42. So I need to do that time for my 21. It's half the time, right? Yeah. Same time, twice the distance. <laughs> but that's really my ambition. I mean, it's a difficult question to ask. It's a very difficult question to ask. Yeah. And you know, leadership is a very intentional construct. Remember, not everybody will lead. That's why we have one head of state at one time. In fact, if you look at Kenya, we have 50-something million. I think we have not had more than even 100 presidential candidates for 60 years. Why don't you stand to be head of state? Correct. You must have a bigger vision for the country. Correct? And, and my view is in this that the formative stages. When I was younger, I had got more time with the family. Yeah, I, I could spend more time. Correct? And, and for me then, as I became much more engaged to build enterprise, I had less time. Correct? And now that we are building an enterprise that is much more solid and mature, I have created more time. Yeah? So, so it's, it's largely um, a curve. It's, it's not a linear curve. So when I look at balance, it's not a linear curve. It's, I say balance is a kind of stages, buckets. So in your 20s, I always tell young professionals to spend as much time they have to sharpen their craft and become experts young enough. I mean, are there things I missed to do? Yes. I mean, I missed like taking my kids to school. Correct? That's something I think I could have done much better, some of the lessons. Yeah? So before I used to start my day earlier, 6 o'clock. Yeah? Today I can start my day, like today I was starting at 9. So you see I could take my, 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 my daughter to school, right? And come. Yeah. So, but generally when I, when I ask my kids, you know, there are things, I've always, I'm very open and said I was not able to create that opportunity when I, when I needed to. Right? But they had someone to take them to school. 
and come back, engage with themselves. I also learned a lot of things from uh, from the leaders I've engaged with, which is something I've not put to practice, but I am trying to get better. So one of the leaders told me, George, thrice a week or four times a week, 7 p.m. they set up a dinner time for their family and kids. It does not matter what happens. As long as they're in Kenya, they will do it. Every four, three, four days a week. I mean, can you imagine how powerful that is? If you diarize it, you purpose it, you put it in your shape, it comes, right? It arises. Yeah.